Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna paint this crocus flower because I had a bunch of people request it last week when I was showing my um, work in my new Arteza watercolor sketchbooks. I had some questions after that kind of review demo video and one question was from Denise over in Liquid Color and she was wondering how they compared to the uh, handbook sketchbooks from um, Travelog or from the handbook journal company, the Travelog sketchbooks. And um, I went and grabbed mine just so I could compare. Um, the paper is different, the cover is different. They're similar in the fact that they've got a linen cover. I'm just taking this strip off so you can see. Uh, the texture is a little bit different and the color is a little bit different in the cover in the um, on the cover. And the texture of the paper is a little bit different. This is a little bit rougher. I actually wasn't crazy. I've only done two things in this sketchbook because I wasn't crazy about it. Um, so you do have a little more texture. I'm just going to flip to a blank page. I don't know if you will tell on camera. Maybe if I tip it a little bit. The uh, the skinnier one here is my travelog handbook. That has more of a cold press texture. This is more smooth. This one's much more like the Stillman and Burn. And I got a couple of my Stillman and Burns right here. Um, Beta Series Mixed Media Pad. So if I hold these up, very similar in texture. I think the Stillman and Burn's a little bit more bright white, but the working proper prop the working properties and the texture and whatnot are very very similar. But there are there are three different papers. Definitely, mo this is uh, the Arteza one is most similar to the um, Premium Sketchbook Mixed Media Beta Series. So if you're looking to compare or you can't get the Arteza one, um, I recommend the Stillman and then Burn. The Stillman and Burn is more expensive, but um, but you're going to have pretty much the same working characteristics. Uh, so we're going to do the uh, crocus. So we're actually going to do a couple crocuses and I'm using four reference photos to kind of get the um, uh, the kind of versions I want in like the buds and whatnot. So I will link those down below. I'm going to start off with an open crocus in the center and I am just going to start with a center petal and I'm going to make it pretty big because I like to work in a large flower petal. I'm drawing darker than I would really want you to just because I want you to be able to see it. So don't draw this dark on your own sketchbook. Go a little bit lighter. And I'm going to bring that middle petal, tapering it and bringing it right down to the stem. And my next petal I'm going to just kind of arc off of that first petal. And this is going to be the one way up to the side. So this is going to determine how wide my crocus is. And I'm only doing a partial one because we have another one that's going to overlap it. Uh, and it should not be as high as that, so I'm bringing that down. I'm going to bring that one up a little bit. And I can, I'm just going to go ahead actually and erase the lines that I know are wrong so I don't end up getting confused. And I brush my crumbs away with just any um, big soft brush. Now I will tell you if you have a silicone mat on your table like I do, it loves to grab eraser crumbs, so it's kind of annoying. I'm going to sharp, uh, shorten that one a little bit. And we'll do another one over here that's almost as, actually that one could be as tall as the middle one. And bring that back. I'm going to stop my line early because then you're going to see, no I can actually bring that one down, right down to the stem. I'm just going to make it a little bit darker for you to see. And we need to get one more over here, but we're going to be able to see inside of it. So we're going to do a little, um, shape there so you can see inside. Then we're going to screw it. So you're kind of looking like like it's a spoon. It's a spoon on the side because it's turned away from you. I'm just going to tuck that in behind there. So we have our center crocus. We can see like another petal there uh, poking up from behind. And then I want to put a bud over here. So I'm just going to kind of do like a long oval shape. and bring that little, like you can kind of see the skin coming up around it as it kind of pushes out of the ground. You're not, you can see a, maybe a little bit of that on this guy. And we'll give, uh, we'll give this guy some longer grasses. Skinny. This one wouldn't have long ones because it's up. It'd be up a little too high for that. 
This is going to be kind of like a montage. It should be really pretty if you did some stamping or some collage with it. And do a couple of their little, little grasses in there. And then we'll do one over here so we can have three things so it'll be a little bit um, a little more interesting. I'd like to ha be able to see the center, like the yellow part of the flower on this one. So I'm going to start, what I'm going to do is actually just draw like a triangle, really, really light. So you might not be able to see that quite as well. And I'm just going to taper it down. So it looks like a martini glass. And uh, this one will come out right off the page, like maybe it's in front of these others. And now I am just going to very, very lightly, this will have the lightest petals as well. Very, very lightly put in these three petals to kind of help balance everything out. Now I want to see in the center a stamen, which we'll, we'll paint yellow, but I want to make sure that I've got it in there. And I'm going to stick a couple other little petals in there. So let me just darken these lines. Don't you darken them though. You keep yours light. So you'll probably be able to see my pencil lines when I'm done, but that's okay. I just want you to be able to see my sketch. So we've got these three um, we've got these three croci, crocuses? I guess it would be crocuses if there's more than one. Okay, now I'm going to just go in and erase any of my sketchy lines that I don't need. And I will link these three reference photos down below so that you can have some to go by. And if you want to change your composition up, you can totally do that. I was brushing that off onto the floor because it's so much easier to sweep up these eraser crumbs from the floor than it is from my uh, from my silicone mat, I have to wipe. I have to wet it down and and, and do that. And a couple other little grasses over here to balance. Okay, so to do these petals to make them translucent, we're going to be working in layers, and I'm just going to go and grab a round brush. And I'm going to grab. Uh, I'll just put a little water in my palette. I'm going to grab some of this purple. Now this is the Arteza watercolors. I'm going to take some of the purple from the pan set. I'm going to grab a little of the magenta. It's kind of like an opera color, actually. Now, let me look at this color next to it. You know what? Use the darker pink. Let's use the darker pink because I think it's going to be a little bit more um, uh, true and transparent. We're going to grab a little ultramarine blue. My ultramarine is from the tube set of 12. I like to use ultramarine blue to darken. If you don't have that, just use one of the more purpley blues from the pan set, like this one right there. That would work fine. It's definitely got a purple tone to it. You don't want a blue that's got a green tone to it. Um, we're also going to be using some green. I'm going to use uh, the sap green from the 12 color tube set because it's a little bit more clean looking. But you could use the permanent green light and the olive green if you want to. Um, I might use a little bit of the olive as well. But you know, just go with whatever's closest, no matter what brand of watercolor you're using. Um, you guys mentioned last week that you really like seeing the palette, the mixing area in the, um, in the video, so I'm gonna leave that in. I'm gonna use this uh, nice warm yellow from the pan set as well. Um, oh, although when I bring it over to my palette, it doesn't look all that bright. Um, maybe let me grab a different one of the yellows. So I'm looking here. These are from the pan set. I'm gonna, gosh, you know that one there looks almost orange. I think would be the best, the best yellow to go with. But you just want something bright and a little bit on the warm side. Okay. Okay. So with the watery color, where I put a lot of water in there, I am going to. Put a glaze in on uh, pretty much every other petal. Now a glaze is simply a transparent layer of color. I've got a quite a uh, quite a puddle there. I don't want that puddle. So what I'm going to do is grab a painting rag here. What I do is like when when you're when you're kitchen towels get too kind of grimy that you don't want to like use them anymore because they're stained and they just look horrible. They're perfect for painting because they're, you know, they're clean, they're very absorbent, any sizing out of the material is gone. And um, it's just really good for that. If you want to add a little bit of, um, of shading, you can add a little bit of a darker color towards the edge, pick it up right from the pan. 
Um, but that's great because these will, especially if you're just using them for watercolor, what I ended up doing, and this was a tip from a viewer, is um, I just uh, will wash them off. I'm worried that they might stain my laundry. Usually watercolor is all right, but what I'll do is I'll just rinse it out really well in the sink, and then I will um, I'll let it dry, and then it'll be good. Or even wash it, hand wash it with a little bit of dish soap. I waited too long before I did that, so I had to go blend the whole thing in. It's nice that the edge is just a little smidgen darker, but we're going to be doing glazing. That's how we're going to get our translucent looking petals. Okay, we're going into the middle flower. We're going to um, do that light wash and then add some color to the tips. Why don't we just do one first? Because we want to make sure that we do a good job on this. So do our light wash of purple. And we'll bring it down here to about here. Then we're going to stop it fairly abruptly. I'm blotting off any excess water from my brush. I'm using a pretty big brush. You don't need to use a brush this big if you don't want to. And now I'm going to pick up the color from the pan and I'm going to add it around the edges. And my brush is pretty dry. And I'm just kind of letting the paint do its thing. I'm going to add a little bit of that here into the bottom as well. And let's see, I could add a little bit more to the top there. So basically, if I see that I can add this in the first layer and it's going to work, then I try to do that because it just saves me some work in the future. I'm just kind of brushing it in. As the paper's drying, I can actually get a little bit of the texture of the subtle veining that you see. It's almost just like a uh, subtle streakiness on there. So now the other ones, you don't see quite as much going on. So I'm just going to go ahead and throw in light wash. If you need more control, hold your brush down near the tip like I'm doing, um, something like this. But when you want to loosen up, that's when you hold it closer to the edge, closer to the end rather. Now over here, um, I'm just going to do the outside. I'm not going to do the inside of that petal right now. I'm just going to do the outside. If you start to get to the bottom of the petal and you have a puddle, just wipe your brush off so that you can end it fairly smoothly. And I'm just going to put a little bit in. If you're getting a hard line, you might need to re-wet the petal. Like, I mean, a pretty hard line there. Um, I think with my winter... You know, it's still, even though today's the first day of spring, happy spring, everyone. Um, you know, the heat's still on. It's still like, you know, 14 degrees outside. So <laughs> it doesn't feel like spring, but I could pretend. Uh, now over here, but it just means your paper dry, dries quicker. Um, over here, we're going to do, um, actually, I want to put a little more detail on that. But I think because all these, like, you know, the petals are just kind of close together. I just want to get a little bit of a definition in there. But I can do that same treatment. I can wet the whole thing and I can add some color in and then we can add more details onto that later. Now for this one, uh, it's going to get quite a bit lighter towards the bottom. So I wet it first and then I add my color to the top. And I can pick up a little bit of this magenta color on my dirty brush and add it into the side. And that will give us a nice base. I can also go in and put the grasses in. Uh, I'm going to do that with a fairly light uh, sap green. I'm going to add a little bit of that yellow to it actually. And I'm just going to do this on dry paper, kind of like just one stroke. Because we can go in and add more to that. Start on the tip of the brush and then press as you pull it down. If you get a blob, just go wipe your brush off and pick up the blob. And you can put as many in as you want. So if you want to maybe do some darker ones with the olive, you can do that. 
The reason I'm starting at the top and going down is because I'll get a slightly more rounded tip on the grasses if I do that. If I go the other way um, I, and I lift, I'll get a sharper tip. So if you want foliage, it's got the sharper tip you want to do that. Now for those, um, <clears throat> this kind of onion skinny area, I'm going to take some of the yellow. I'm going to mix some of the purple with it. And it's going to give me a nice brown. And I'm going to go in and just kind of blot that, just kind of dab it in a little bit. I want this fairly watery. And then I'm going to grab something to scrape with because that's going to give me that really nice uh, texture. I've just got a piece of cut up old gift card here. And I'm blot up the excess. And you can drip in a little bit of that purple if you want to. And do the same right over here. And a little bit of scraping. You'll see this in a lot of bulb flowers. You'll see a lot of that um, kind of like wrapped around the base of a bud, like an irises and whatnot. Okay, so we're gonna go back around and start doing another layer on our, um, on our flowers. We're gonna grab some more purple. If you need to switch brush sizes, if this feels unwieldy, you can do that. Um, I'm going to go into this middle one first just because I have too much paint on my brush to do one of those smaller ones right now. Um, and I'm just going to go in and overlap. That's how we're getting our translucence in our petals. We'll do the same thing over here. We're going to paint that petal as if we can see through. Isn't that pretty? We'll do the same over here. And over here. I think it's such a charming, beautiful effect. And let's see this inner part. I'm going to grab a little magenta here. And get the inside of this flower. I'm just going to paint this inside up here. Actually, no, I think I will pull that down in front of the other one. It's going to be a little subtle because that one's still wet, but that's all right. Um, <clears throat> maybe I should have let that dry. I'm not going to worry about it though. Excuse me, I got a cough. <coughs> Goodness gracious, I need to have my, I need to have my herbal tea. Okay, so now we have to let that dry before we can do that last guy there. And also with that, but we can come over here. If you want to switch to a, another brush, you can, but this brush has a razor fine point on it. So I'm just going to stick with this one. Just make sure you don't have it too wet because with a synthetic brush, sometimes these, these tackle ones, they're so resilient. They're such a workhorse um, and they're so long lasting. But the downside is that sometimes they will like release all their water at once. And that can be very frustrating. So this isn't going to have that translucent appearance because the, the petals are all packed tight in like an opaque mass. So here I'm just going to be throwing in kind of like the edges. And I'm just kind of feathering it in. I'm starting on the edge where I just painted and just flicking that the brush strokes in so I get a little bit of veining. And down here I can see that I've got this darker area that I want to color in. Pick up a little of that magenta. Don't have too much water. You need enough water so that your bristles stick together. Okay? But not so much water that you need to make, you're going to make lots of long flowing lines. And the only way to really get used to how much water you should have is by painting. You've got to practice. There's no like 
there's no rule of thumb I could tell you that would make sense more than just telling you to practice and get to know your brushes. And part of that is sticking with it and not, you know, thinking that you're going to buy some magic supply that's going to make you better overnight because that's not the case. If you have decent supplies, they're going to they're going to work, you know? Um don't expect to find some magic brush or magic paint that's going to you know turn you into a you know a professional painter overnight no you need to practice okay oh this is this color is perfect on its own i'm just going to put that center in there and then um, i'm going to dilute that down a little bit this kind of add it with some water and some of that brown mix on my palette which was the uh, which was this yellow plus the purple i'm just kind of swirling it until I take down some of the chroma, I desaturate it a bit. I'm going to add a little bit of that over here in this husky area. I'm also going to throw it into some of the flat, uh, some of the, the grasses. And this is going to bring harmony. This is fun. This is so such a whee, we're having a good time. We're just playing this playful, playful painting. We're not worrying about anything. This should be a very loose, relaxed, um, relaxed piece here. I'm going to have a little bit of the ultramarine blue mixing into this brownish color. Um, because the stalks, where it goes from um, purple, right under the purple, are more of like a white. So I want to get the ultramarine in there, kind of gray down this brownish color and put some of that into the into the stalks themselves, maybe a little bit of the green. And mixing colors is another one of those things where it's just practice. Get the edges, clean my brush off, and then I'm just going to spread that around a little bit. Now on this paper, um, it doesn't respond quite the same as regular watercolor paper, uh, like a cotton watercolor paper. You're not going to have days on days to blend this stuff. Not that you do with watercolor either, but you know, you just have to work a little bit more, um, a little bit more quickly if you want to lay down color and then blend it. So have your rag handy to wipe your brush, that sort of thing. I want to bring a little more purple down into those stems. And maybe even add a little bit of green in there too. Of course, you can. If you have a, a smaller palette, you don't have green. Go ahead and mix your own. That is wonderful. Okay, now I'm going to take um, some of that sap green. I'm going to add some of my ultramarine blue blue to it because that's gonna um, that's gonna darken it. You know what I didn't do? I didn't spray my palette before I started. That's something I usually do with these Arteza paints and they still are working fine. So if you find that your paint is not, um, and I haven't used these since last week either. Uh, if you find that your paint is not flowing as well as you like, then, um, then just give them a spray. This would be really pretty on an Easter card, I think, or a spring card <clears throat> or Mother's Day. I apologize for the frogginess. Probably should have said, <laughs> had Jason edit that out, but uh, you know what? We're all we're all enjoying our morning together. You know how it is. Be a little froggy in the morning when you haven't talked to anybody yet. Okay, so now we've got a couple more petals to do. So again, we're going to grab that violet color, that purple. I feel like the colors in the Arteza palette, the pan palette, is they're much more subtle, so they're a little easier to control. They're not quite as um, stain the paper transparent as um, other brands. They are, I would call them definitely student quality. And we're going to go up here and do this one. And that's pretty much it for the glazing. So now I'm going to switch to a smaller brush and just do some veining. Oh, let's see. What do I want to use? I want to use something small. I have a little number two that's been really, really handy lately. It's a cheapo. It's a little Da Vinci um, Nova number two, which what the heck did I do with that? I'm using it a lot lately. Here it is. It was stuck in with that because I use it for gouache too. It was in my 
my acrylic brushes because I use my acrylic brushes for gouache. And this is a, a Da Vinci Number no. Two Nova Fit for School and Hobby. Like I think it was a probably a couple dollars. It came in a Smart Art box, but Consumer Crafts also sells this one. But any small two pointed round, I'm just finding this one works really well. Um, so if you are looking for something like that, this line of brushes is quite affordable. So I'm going to go anywhere like here where I have a seam of like the the petals. And I'm just, I drew a little line and then I'm just flicking back a, like a little bit of veining. Look at the colors that you're working with. Here I'm going to go a little more magenta. Draw around this little, uh, this little petal and flick in some of that magenta. You don't have to put in a ton of details. I like to put a little bit into the husk as well to get that a little bit more lively. Uh, you don't have to put a ton of details in um, because your the viewer's eye will fill in a lot of the detail. Making myself some interesting greens and I like to go in, start at the bottom and kind of pull up a line to the top and lift when I get to the top. Because these little grasses tend to be kind of like folded in half when they're new around the buds. And that gives you that kind of thickness and depth. You don't have to do it to all of them, but definitely I would to the ones that are right around the um, the flower that's, that's starting to bud. Like these ones that are kind of fillers in the back, I wouldn't worry about those. And start bottom and go to the top so you get that nice taper that's a little sharper than what we wanted before when we stopped at the top. When we started at the top and went down, we did that so we would have um, we would have that blunt top because the bulbs have those grasses that have that blunt top. Okay, so you're just kind of enhancing that. All right, we're going to do the same thing with a purple again on this, um, this center flower, center petal. We are going to start, um, let's start here. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to do a portion at a time. Oops. Watch out for beads of water on the ferrule of your brush so you don't end up getting um, a big blob of water in the middle of what you're trying to paint. So I am, I don't really want to outline everything. I just want to do like a portion. So I'm going to do over here. And then I am going to just kind of, again, drag in some veining using my brush straight up and down so that I get a nice fine line. We can do the same over here. And I am going to pull some of that down into the stock. Okay, um, pay attention to the colors that you see. If you see a little more pink, you can go in with a little more pink in areas. And now you can pretty much just jump around here. Uh, over here I'm seeing I have quite a bit of pink, so I'm going in and just kind of... laying in the pink. I should have uh, overlapped with this, with this petal back here. I don't know why I didn't. Uh, let's see... I'm confused. I'm, I have like so many reference photos open up on my computer right now. Like, what one was I using for this? This one, we'll start, this, this one has a lot of the veining kind of like concentrated in the center. And you're not going to see as much. You do have some uh, kind of like cups around the top of that. Now, if you have any stray pencil lines that you're not going to be covering over, you will be able to um, you will be able to erase those if there's no paint on top of them. So don't worry about that. Like that guy there, I don't know what was going on there, but I didn't erase him, but he'll be fine. There, we're starting to get the depth in our flowers. If you've got a little bit too much, I feel like that's a little bit too harsh, so I'm just softening that. Um, and just a little teeny, teeny bit back here just so it doesn't look like it's on its own.
That seemed a little harsh actually, but it'll be fine. Okay, over here, um, these are a little bit lighter. Uh, I'm gonna add a little bit of that pink and purple together. You wanna repeat the colors, but you also want each flower to be a little bit unique and individual. Crocuses are not my favorite flowers. Um, I'm not sure why. I think I feel like if I if I ever want to paint a crocus, it's like I'd prefer to paint a tulip, or I'd prefer to paint a lily or something. I don't know. But I did enjoy doing that one in my sketchbook, and I think maybe it's because I made it uh, big enough that I could really kind of work on the petals. I'm getting sloppy over here. You might want to take a little more time. Now, if you wanted to add some spatter to this, I would go in with like a, a yellow so that you could kind of bring that color from that center out a little bit more. Or if you wanted to do a background, a yellow would be really pretty. Um, I think I'm just gonna leave mine plain, but you can do whatever you wanna do on your painting and your sketchbook. I hope you enjoyed this today. Please give me a thumbs up if you did. And I will have all these products linked down below so that you can find them if you want. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.